How's everybody doing? Alright, we got some viewers now. So, you guys know how I do. You guys that don't know how I do, top to bottom on the move list. Let me know if the music's overpowering me. Um, this is part two of Armor King. I did part one last week. I have yet to upload it to the YouTube. I'll upload it together with this part. And I believe I left off at forward forward moves. But to recap some stuff from last time, right? Um, if you're thinking about, like, what are the differences between King and Armor King? Well, there's less now than there were before, because King now has this, and King now has this. And now he does, not only does regular King have that, he has a better version that does more damage, has the Marduk string attached to it, and a better version of that Marduk string is attached to it, forward to, down, one, two, because King can hit confirm that shit, Marduk cannot. And, they're, and they nerfed Marduk to be negative 15 on that now, it used to be negative 14, which is kind of annoying to me, but whatever. So yeah, King got the season 2 damage buff on it. King also got the season 2 damage buff on this. Armor King did not get that. So, those are some pretty big things that they gave King that used to be exclusive to Armor King, right? In general, though, I would say Armor King is a better with Punisher than regular King. Obviously, Dark Upper is the big thing. If you're really good at this kind of stuff from, uh, from playing Mishimas, you probably should know how to do, or should be able to execute this as a 14 frame punish, right? Not off of every 14 frame punish, but like two hit strings that are 14 frames. You could probably execute that shit. I can't. But uh, ideally, if you see Tekken Bot, it says that's 11 frames because it animates at 11 frames. That's not a lie. Uh, it's a 14 frame at fastest punish because you cannot buffer the input, the directional input during block stuff. So what that means is if, I'm, if I were to block something, I could buffer the forward. The first forward that you have to do. Then I have to buffer a neutral down, down forward. I have to let go of the forward, register, the game has to register the neutral, I believe, after I leave block stun, and then down, down, forward two, which adds the three frames, and makes it 14. That's how that works, in case you're wondering. So, um, he's got Dark Upper, which, you know, does a shit, you guys have seen the Twitch videos, right? The Twitch, uh, the Twitch, the, sorry, the Twitter videos, showing how much damage he gets off of this. He's always gotten really high, way above average damage off of that, that's not new right and then the base uh, range on it is pretty good already but then it's like you could just kind of do a little dash just like any other fucking electric but it's unsafe it's negative 10 on block uh the other thing armor king has is generally like for whiff punishment this shit is really fucking good that's a 14 frame block punish with a ton of range it spins at wall spats does 30 damage look at the range on him punching him in the fucking thigh meat that's a lot of range on this shit Look at that. Can he even backdash that second one, or does it not give enough frames? Let's see. If I hit him with the first one, and then he backdashes. Okay, see? He can't back. He has to block. He can't backdash. It's safe on block, but duckable, obviously. But because it's a hit confirm, just like with many other things, you could do this. You could uh, practice. Uh, because it's a natural combo, not a hit confirm, sorry. To practice hit confirming it based on the whiff, like I always show. Right? Wait, what is it down back to? Okay. See? Easy. You could do that. Ideally, you could do that in any situation. If you sidestep or backdash and input the first hit in any situation. As long as you do some sort of evasive movement before, that allows you to basically turn that into a hit confirm. So that's, that's always nice to have, and King has that off of a 14 frame mid. The 14 frame mid itself, this is down back to, it's negative 11 though, so it's not that good. Still nice to have, a nice option to have. Ideally, you want to do, a, do what I just did with Death Sandwich, I step 2-1. This is probably his biggest nerf. I have yet to talk about Death Sandwich uh, in the actual move list. But like, if you guys have seen, JDCR shared his, a little short video about his thoughts on Armor King, because we're a month in now. And he's, he, like, instantly called out this being a huge nerf. This, on normal hit in Tekken Tag 2, this, and I forget if he had in Tekken 6, I think he did. This would do a, a nosebleed-style knockdown, right? The, when you hold down during nosebleed, it would do that knockdown on normal hit. So he had really good Oki off of it, and just the first hit by itself was already good. And then the second hit was still an instant combo like this. Now, it's like, if you're going to use this, you should use both hits. Because the first hit is unsafe. I think it's negative 12. Yeah, see? So that's a big hit to that move, that sandwich. But you can hit confirm it in the exact same way I just showed you guys. Whether they jab and then you sidestep and they, they do something and then you, it whiffs, 
Slash that commits to the two. They do something. Two one. Easy. Uh, you can do the same thing. You make them block a down for one to a side step two. If they swing, finish it. You can make them block a jab, one two, or a single jab, side step two. All that shit. But you know, unfortunately, it's unsafe. So, and if he finishes it, it's uh, I forget if it forces crouch, but negative thirteen forces crouch. So depending on the matchup, you might get launched. Uh, so the other big thing uh, that King has, uh, Armor King has over King, he has a couple, but the one, we're talking about major things. Dark Upper, right? Once upon a time, down three, but not anymore. King has that too. Um, he has a traditional wave dash. Now, in regards to King and, and Armor King, like how do you use a wave dash mix up when they don't have a uh, health sweep, right? Or some sort of like dangerous low out of this? Well, easy. Well, not easy, but here's one thing you could do to get them to duck. Mix up your throws out of it, right? That's not it. Now, I, I'm not, you know. Once upon a time, I was okay at this because I used to play Armor King. There it is. You could wave dash into Giant Swing, which is going to mix up with any other fucking throw you could do in that situation. It's a 1 plus 2 break. Shining Wizard, you know. Which I'm going to get it. There you go. You could wave dash into Shining Wizard. You could wave dash into the full crouch grab, the... the, the the fucking electric chair power bomb, right? You can wave dash into that. Yeah. If, uh, so it won't be super clean because of the input. Oh, you can wave dash into this awesome looking throw. I love that fucking throw. Um, you know, you can wave that. You know, get creative, right? So yeah. And then if you get them, to, and also he has like an unblockable high, but that should get them to duck on reaction. That's kind of gimmicky. That does wall spread though. Uh, and then you mix it up with all sorts of other shit. And if they don't want to duck, you got you got crouch dash one, which is like plus six, I think, on block, right? He has good he has good uh, crouch dash options. So if you want to run a wave dash mix up of sorts, you can do it. And don't forget, you could also do forward forward neutral too. Out of that, you just have to delay it after a dash. And that is the thing I've seen Armor King players do. You also just cancel it into a down three. The cool thing about Wave Dash is you could do any fucking move out of it. You could go into a hop kick, you know? <laughs> you go to 444. You can go to instant running three. Pick your poison. You got it. It's down through a good setup for buffer throws. Uh, it's plus one on hit. It's a good setup for giant swing. That's it. You get interrupted with Jazz if you do any other throw, because giant swing is 10 frames. So giant swing will interrupt any uh, you know thing that doesn't duck a high, or uh, yeah, it'll, it'll interrupt anything that jumps off the floor too, obviously, because he has an air throw out of that. All right. So um, I talked a little bit about the um, burning knuckle unblockable last time, and I didn't like talk too much about it because I just said straight up said, you know, he has a ton of fucking setups. I don't know them, and then like I was saying, look up Majin. He's got him. And you know what? Lo and behold, I think yesterday or two days ago, Majin shared on his uh, Twitter a fucking YouTube video, which is just like four minutes of just setups for this shit. All sorts of setups. And the cool thing about it is there was one off of this without having to do the annoying pickup, the 3 plus 4 pickup. It was like a simple ass juggle off of that. And then he just got it. You know? I don't remember what the juggle was. Oh, me? It was me, right? I don't know how to pick up with the Neo for that though. He might be sidestepping. That's the unfortunate thing about that shit. He was doing that into a knee, so it might have been character dependent or whatever, I don't know. But you'd have to look up Majin stuff. So yeah, just like regular King, Armor King has a shitload of uh, guaranteed setup for that. Like it's not even really a setup, it's just a guarantee. it's basically a combo. He does like a 50 damage juggle and then he gets this, he gets the unblockable guarantee. And if you get up, you eat the full fucking damage. So just stay down and then you eat less damage. It's like 30, it's, uh, 30 something if you stay down, basically. So yeah, and it's because of like all the weird angles he gets. Like that on counter hit was one of the things Majin was showing off. He was doing juggles with that. It's a guarantee. So yeah. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, he has like a regular old fashioned hop kick. The hop kick ranges have been really bad. So, so yeah. So, where I last left off was the forward forward news. Yeah, scissors kick. Oh, yeah, I learned that scissors kick is safe on block. I didn't know that. Uh, underhanded, I talked about that already. On counter hit, that starts juggles, right? Yeah, that's a juggle starter on counter hit. 
That's the thing you can do out of like the crowd chats is a low, and it's also plus on hit, plus seven. But it's awful on block. Negative 18. Regular King has something like that, but his goes into a hit throw on counter hit. Armor King just goes straight into a juggle. Solar Plexus Punch. So that's just a knockback on normal hit. Another thing you can easily do out of uh, Wave Dash, right? Wave, wave move. Excuse me. This is negative 11. Oh, another thing about wave dashing is every time you move forward, you're realigning. So any, all of these moves that I'm doing now, you'll uh, realign anyone that tries to like step guard or shit like that. So it's pretty good. Gangplank one trick. <laughs> Gangplank one trick. Are you talking about League of Legends? Um. So yeah, Solar Plexus Punch, I don't really know. It's just kind of like a knockback. It is a wall split, but it's unsafe. It's always nice to have a mid wall split option It's safe. This is not one of them. I don't really know. I don't know if I would use this move too much. Let's see how the tracking is on this puppy. What am I doing? No wave dash. Just testing the uh, national tracking on this. So it seems like it has some natural tracking to his right. Yep, I even can't I can't walk it either. And underhanded, right? There's a delay on this one though. Yeah. Yeah, stepped this kinda late because of the dash. So yeah, uh, basically walk, walk if you go left, but step right seems to be okay. So let's go. Comeback kick, that's a great name. Oh, this is that new shit that they, uh, it's not a new move, but the juggle off of this is new. He now has a down three plus four one pickup. If you're not slow, right? And that looks like it definitely gives him the angle for the unblockable, right? Homing high. Wow, too slow. <clears throat> too slow, man. Shit. Damn, I thought that works. I don't know what the actual juggle like is. The angle is weird, so there's all sorts of funky shit I'm sure you can do off of that. But uh, it's a pretty quick high, and it's zero on block. Very good move. Homing high, that's fairly quick. 17 frames. You can do it easily out of wave dash, too. And you're even on block. That's a pretty decent setup for Giant Swing yet again. Now, if they jab after that, the jab will counter hit you. Because when an attack clashes on the same frame with the grab in this specific game, the grabber gets counter hit. That's the only time grabs can get counter hit, which was a, a buff compared to what they did in 7.0. 7.0 throws got counter hit, and it was rough. After the throw nerf, they got counter hits too. It's like, yikes. If I did that right. No, I just did it slow. I needed a clash in the same frame. There it is. So that's a perfect, that's how you know it's a perfectly executed 10 frame. Because I'm counter hitting him now. Uh, perfectly executed um, right after you recover. First frame, not 10 frame. Woo! All right. Comeback kick. Oh, he could cancel that to the stupid step. Ooh. Is there any, like, unique, like, setups for that? Or is that just some dumb gimmicky shit for if they jab after that, you go into this and fuck with them? Doesn't seem like it'll be plus. It could be plus because he's canceling out of an animation, actually. And they are in block stuff. Let's go into wall standing floor. It's not even close. I didn't think so. Uh, I forget what he gets out of that stupid shit. The tackle, right? 
Honestly, I see it's kind of gimmicky, really. Yeah, the tackle's all you got. Let's see what I can interrupt the tackle with. The edge spear. Oh, that's actually... Okay, so he interrupted my my uh, 13 frame down forward one. Oh yeah, by the way, that's another thing Armor King has over King. He has a standard down forward one. Although King has a really good 13 frame too, so it's not even that big a deal. He's down forward two. Um, beats jabs, right? Stand jab. Okay, so it beats stand jab. Cross jab loses to his standing, so he doesn't get floated. That's good. So that's not a bad setup if you want to if you want to run a, a gimmick versus new players, lower level players. Well, actually, no, even... Yeah, oh, that's blockable. I forgot about that. Um, that's not like a throw. I forgot about that. That's a good low-level gimmick right there. I'd run this shit. Run this shit all the way to fucking red ranks easily. Maybe not to red ranks, but to, <laughs> to orange at least. People will not know how to punish this. And then when they start doing weird shit, you just do, you do the kick by itself and then hit him. Brawler kick. <laughs> 15 frames, huh? Negative 14 with pushback. Not so great at the wall, maybe. Um, does this bounce? And now it looks like it wall bounces, right? I think that's what wall bounces in the trailer. Dash two. Um, I'm not really looking at dark upper controls, but the problem with up forward three as a cross dash like instant like follow up after a launch, in my opinion, is that um, it's low damage compared to before. See now, I don't know what if he has any good like wall bounces to those re splats to send people flying into the fucking wall and you get a full splat. I don't know if he has. I don't. I don't know if he has anything like that. Forward 2 1, maybe? Yeah. Depending on your spacing, at least. Sure. 69. Alright. It seems like a lot of wall bounce combos do 75 ish tops. Unless you do like really dumb, fancy, specific setup shit. So that, that seems okay. I'm sure he gets a lot better. If you play around with it some, you know? So yeah, like, you look at this as a filler. 12 damage filler on the fucking 70%. Why not just do the old-fashioned ba-ba for an extra 2 damage? And I'm sure you'll get similar results. As far as, like, follow-ups go, right? That's the old-school shit. Old-school as in Tag 2 and before in Tekken 6. Uh, maybe, maybe DR too. I don't know. Did he have dark upper in DR? I'm sure he did. Yeah, I, I'm sure he did. Oh, I gotta turn this shit up. Tekken 2, baby. Woo! Yeah, Dot 4 1 plus 2 was a screw in the trailer. I'm talking about what I did with forward 2 1. You get more damage at least. Flying forearm. So this is basically the second hit of three plus four two. It's probably too loud, isn't it? Basically the same thing. If it hits, he kicks up. If it gets blocked, you punish him in the same way. You gotta hit him grounded. Um, I don't know if there's any characters that could float. He has a kind of weird float that might work. <laughs> I think I tested this last time. I don't really know. So I'm holding back right now. Now, it's hitting as a punish and it's not floating him, so. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone could uh, float punish that. So, you want to block that and just, like, hit him grounded with something. Or, like, a ground grab if you got one, you know. If you want to mix that up and get a little extra damage. Otherwise, you probably get, like, 20 inch damage with your grounded hit. That's grounded hit on it. But, yeah. Not much to say about that. There might be some, some fancy setups for it. 
That would look cool if you were able to do that off of a juggle, like a high launch. Then he elbows you, and then he kicks up, and it continues the fucking combo. That'd be cool. They should have given him that, but whatever. He does a lot of cool looking shit already. So four, four, big plus four. In the giddy. In the giddy. Negative ten. He falls in. Uh, oh, that position. So if you're fighting against him and you block this shit, you want to make sure you just hit him grounded and then back the fuck away from him. Hit him grounded. Don't get greedy. Because if you try to get greedy, you're gonna eat a juggle. That position is, you know, clean hit juggle starter on the low. It's gonna mash out the low kick, right? Right? Yeah. Just, oh, it actually hit him standing when he interrupts. So yeah, you'll interrupt it if you swing right away, but if they wait. And do it, see? So you gotta be careful. Ooh, that just crushed it, really. So just punish it with a grounded hit and back away. The grounded hit should knock him away. Anyway, so. Just let him get up. Although, the cool thing is, when he's back here and they stay down, you can try to sneak that in there and it'll hit him. If, assuming you don't whiff it. If you whiff it. You're going to eat the low, and then it's going to be annoying. So watch your spacing on that one. Shadow Larry. So we talked a little bit about this earlier. Um, I don't know if there's any guaranteed follow-ups. Check his ollie kick. I'm just mashing it. Don't worry about the second kick. Yeah, that definitely is guaranteed. Testing of this is guaranteed. The attempt, obviously. Yeah. All right, hold on. Yeah, that positioning. All right. See, now I'm curious about something, so I'm going to switch to Marta real quick. Unique moves in positions such as, uh, well, Spring Kick isn't really unique. But, like, Marduk has something where he knocks you down, and then he gets a up 4-4, and then he gets a ground grab, unless they spring kick. Thing is, you cannot spring kick from that position, but Marduk has unique moves from that submission. From, from that position. Submission. From that position. And usually those uh, come out faster than even getting up off the floor. So, that's why Kuma's a pain in the ass to do Okeon, in case you're wondering. Those, those kind of unique attacks, they come out faster than pretty much anything else they could do when they're grounded. Including getting up. Oh boy. Marduk don't give a fuck. His stupid bald head. He needs hair, apparently. You can't pick him up. No hair. Alright. So, character dependent on that one. Let's call it. <laughs> call it like I see it. <laughs> uh, Gigas has that stuff too, but it's slower. I'm trying it anyway. Ideally, you should just go for whatever your strongest grounded hit, hit is there anyway. I just want to test this just to see, you know. Wow, it just doesn't work on these big guys. These big guys always done weird shit, like Marduk especially. Historically, he's uh, caused weird shit to happen when you hit him in the upper body. Things just like miss on him for, for no reason, really. Like uh, in DR, or maybe it was 5.0, I think it was in DR. Jin's old Couch Dash 4 jungle was just Savage Sword, down back 2, 2, 3. That's all that he got, right? This, that was in DR, really. Uh, but Marduk, it would just whiff on unless he was at a weird axis. Uh, so Jin just had to use the built-in follow-up on Marduk. <laughs> Couch Dash 4, 3 plus 4. Which was like 10 points of damage less or something like that. Or 5 points. That might be the best damage wise right there. But uh, he may have something um, for better Oki and shit, you know? Nope, not that. Nope, not that. That looks like it should hit grounded, okay? 
What's up, man? So that Larry is a very good move. I don't think it tracks. That's not a draw kick. Why are you calling it a draw kick? Oh my god. <laughs> Can't do it from 2P side apparently. This used to happen to me in Tag 2 when I would try, yeah, juggles into uh, Larry and shit like that. Okay, it looks like it should track me that way, and it does. Ooh. Oh boy. So it seems like at least Armor King has to sidewalk it left. Obviously, you could just duck it too, you know. Ooh. Came up too fast with the boss standing. Damn. You have to really wait for that shit. At least it's a big whip. You could just visually see his arm blow through and then do it. <laughs> Very good move, though. Anyway, Dark Smash. That's Dark Upper. They changed the name. It's Dark Upper. People will still continue to call this Dark Upper DU for short. Ignore this stupid new name. Dark Smash. Dark Godfist. That's the Crouch Dash 3, Gimmicky High. Um, I already talked about Dark Upper. Crouch Dash 2. Not much else to say about it. Negative 10 on block. Mainly a whiff punish and a block punish if you're good with it. Really good. If you are planning on really maining this character, I strongly suggest practicing punishing negative 14 with this input. Not an easy thing. Very fucking difficult. Trust me. It's not a Brian Jet Upper situation. That Jet Upper is easy to do. This is not. So, try to get that shit. At the very least, get it for negative 15 consistently. Because that's more damage than Hawking. So, a lot more damage than Hawking. Overall, probably like five more points minimum. So, yeah. Uh, negative 10 on block. So, if you kind of, like, if you think it, it's an electric. It's not a fucking electric. Don't call it that. Electric is, it, the whole point of electric is you can just kind of mindlessly, almost mindlessly throw it out versus most people that aren't used to the matchup because it's a uh, plus five on block with pushback and you recover like that. This doesn't, this doesn't recover like an electric on block or on whiff. So it's not that kind of move. You have to be on point with your whiff punch on that. And remember, you can always dash into it first to add range. So if you're unsure about your spacing, you can just go double tap forward and then do the same input. Forward and then forward, neutral, whatever. And it adds a shitload of range. Alright, so cross dash three. Not much to say about this. This is just, you gotta, it's pretty fast, right? 31 frames, but it's reactable. Much like a react reactable low is reactable, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 23 damage, unblockable high. Watch for the sparks on his feet and the little dancing he does before. And duck it, especially when your back is to the wall. You don't want to get hit by this shit. I do recommend using this if you like really sure people are afraid at the wall. Just toss that at them right in their face. Bam, every once in a blue moon. And you'll be surprised how often you catch people off guard with that shit. And then do your usual wall combo stuff, right? Uh, knee ball cross dash four. Wasn't it? This used to be a juggle filler, right? Yeah, it is. Okay. How does this look? Uh, he's, he wouldn't get forward to one out of that, would he? I'm just curious. Nope, okay. Eh, not really a juggle filler then. Uh, negative nine, okay. Normal hit. Slides. Guaranteed follow up? Yes, guaranteed follow ups. So, okay, shoulder. Uh, I don't know what the best would be, but shoulder looks good. Same thing on counter. Here. All right, not bad. That's not the kind of knockback you can hold back on. That's why it combos. If 
If it didn't combo, it means it could hold back to escape it. Good move. Let's see how the tracking is on that. My guess is if that were to track, it'd be his right side, right? Makes sense. It's my track. It's a roundhouse, so it might be. Oh, yeah. Definitely his right side, as it looks. And then the knee ball. Tracking on this shit. Ah, poison nests. Now I don't know what this actually gives him in this game. I know what the um, rage uh, drive gives him. Uh, I think this gives him plus frames. Nothing guaranteed unless it's uh, Oki. I think this is uh, gives him stuff at the wall on Oki because there's 11 active frames. See, plus 13. Yeah, it's another unblockable high, by the way. So another reason to get them to duck. So you gets them to duck with highs, basically. Damn it. Alright, is there a knockdown I could try this on? To get the later frames. I got it 11 one time. Uh, plus 13. Okay. Damn it. That's uh, active frame number two. I'd have to test this at the wall. I'm sure there's guaranteed stuff. I'm sure people know setups for this, right? You Armor King players. up uh, dash down one four but it's pretty difficult oh a pickup off of the um, the knee is that what you're talking about oh so he could pick up off of that that's unusual I think the only other character I know that could pick up off of a knockdown like that is Steve and that's with the really hard massage massage cancel right Really slow off of that. So, is the cross jazz supposed to whiff and the knee connects? I'm guessing. Because the knee looks like the kind of knee that would float like that. Jumbo Saruda knee. Triple H, if you want to be all American wrestling about it. Speaking of, how was Wrestle Kingdom? I've heard pretty good things. No real surprises other than one. The way that a certain someone won, let's say. A certain someone that I'm not too big a fan of, but they seem really high on over there. How do people come up with those frame perfect moves? You mean those like really hard pickups? Well, when you play this series for a while, and you see the kind of crazy shit that people have done in older games and even more recent games, you start to realize like what might be possible. And if it feels like it's possible, you'll get people with some like solid, decent, or good enough execution 
to just really test it, put it through the ringer. Tekken has so many variables going on because of the way movement and uh, and the way the hurt boxes work. The hurt boxes, like like when you compare it to let's say Soul Calibur, which also has a lot of variables because of how free flowing the movement is. Soul Calibur access stuff is weird. Hit boxes get fucked up with Soul Calibur. Tekken, they don't get as fucked up, but they get fucked up in a different kind of way where you start to get guaranteed things that aren't usually guaranteed because of stuff like Axis and the way that hits hit and hurt boxes interact. The way knockdowns work, there's always one leg higher than the other leg or some shit. So if you see that animation on some sort of knockdowns, like, oh, this guy's like right leg is a little higher than his left. Let me go off Axis to that side. Maybe then I'll get a different juggle. And then lo and behold, you get a different fucking juggle. You know? You just, you just get used to these kinds of things. People just test. That's why I, I, I bet she would like, I don't know, he has, has he responded to the Just Friend Dick Jab? Oh, he hasn't responded to what I asked. That's why I bet you, just looking at the animation of this move, I bet you that what's supposed to happen is either the cross jab whips, or like, or it just con or it hits in a way where the second hit hits him before his legs fall all the way. And that knee, you could tell, based on how a lot of things flow, like that, you could tell that knee is gonna do something like that. All right, well, I'm not gonna get stuck here too, too crazy on this, but apparently you can pick up with a dash down one four and it's very difficult. Yeah, if you get it, it floats and you can get down back two four. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, up back one, up back one shot. Oh, sending off, a, oh yeah, it does the same knockdown. They spent a ton of time in practice. Does that mean uh, Bruce Briggs is easier to hit from one side because of the knee up? Maybe. Maybe. I wouldn't be able to tell you. I could tell you it affects Marduk, for example. Marduk, his left arm sticks out like crazy, and it's easy to clip him, right? And because of the way he stands and how wide he is, he actually has difficulty sidestepping to his left. Always. He kind of sidesteps to his right side like an average character, but Marduk has trouble going to his left. Anyway, it's because of that that, like, if you see people say Marduk doesn't have great whiff punishment despite him ha ha having moves that have a lot of range, really it's the combination of him having to make more space to make things whiff than other characters, which is why Marduk has historically had one of the best backdashes in the series. In Tekken DR, he had the best backdash in the game. Uh, I think there's other characters that have better backdashes now, like Capels probably, I'm sure. But that's because they kind of need it. You know, Marduk, he needs that. He needs to be able to create that kind of space to be able to move at all, or else he can't. And if they don't want him moving, they wouldn't give him a good backdash. They, they would make him like Gigas. You know, they don't want Gigas moving. They want Marduk to move. So, he creates a space well, but like, you know, he needs to create more space than other characters. Let me give you an example. Last time I was streaming online matches, I ran into a guy that got Milo from my chat. I don't know if he's there now. He was Leo, and Leo was a fucking, you know, if there's one thing you know about Leo is that Leo has a lot of fucking space and it's a pain in the ass. So I, I was, throughout the whole set, I fought him like 20 matches or some shit. I was trying to find a way to make down forward two whiff. I would run up, try to make down forward two whiff, and just try to get like a good space in the whiff punish. The thing about Leo's down forward two is if you want to whiff punish, you have to be on point because Leo steps forward for down forward two and then steps back to where she was standing initially. So if you're slow, it's gonna whiff, and then another down forward two is coming, because every fucking Leo does that shit. In case you couldn't tell, I hate fighting that fucking character. She's not more popular because she's so bland, but she's so fucking annoying to fight, my god. Um, so yeah, Marduk has, you know, it got to the point where, alright, let me try to get closer to run into it and block it. And then I started actually running into the move and getting launched. It's it's really difficult to get used to that sort of spacing with that. You have to play that character a ton to really feel what I'm talking about. But Marta Claire has been playing it for a while. They know, you know. Uh, but he got some new tools or some old tools back in this game to make up for that. So yeah, it even affects shit like this. You see Armor King when he's standing still. You see how he's stepping back and forward. That messes with stuff, right? The, uh, Stances, neutral stances mess with stuff. Master Raven, the classic example. Master Raven stands with her hands like this, hugging herself, but her legs are fucking like a arc, right? A V. So if you're right in her face, her foot is pushing you back. So there are certain things that will just whiff right in front of her, even though you're touching her. Because uh, her arms aren't sticking out to get hit. Her upper body is sticking up, but her, her foot is, so you can hit her with lows from further away than you can other characters. 
Akuma, his dumb ass legs are all the way back here and his fucking upper body is pushing you away. So he pushes you out of low poke range fairly often. So yeah. All that you gotta take into consideration. That's the kind of shit that happens in Tekken. So I need something that causes a backflip here. Alright, let me see. Let me put a tech on this. This is Hop could cause a backflip. Nope, it's not Claudio's. What wall attack does he have that causes a backflip? Yeah, Dragon is weird too. Eddie, Lay. Lay is really fucking weird. Lay is constantly off axis because he's like dancing around left and right constantly. That kind of shit definitely happens. Usually when you see somebody get angry, you're like, why did that whiff there? What the fuck? Why did this happen? That's a big part of it. Um, anybody know if Armor King has one of those low hit wall enders that causes a backflip? That's what I'm looking for right now. Anybody know? Nah, that doesn't do that, does it? No, that doesn't. That's just a string that naturally hits us a low wall hit in the end. I'm talking about, you know, like those Oki moves that cause backflip. There's, there's strings that do that too for wall combos. Like this. Well, not quite that animation, but you know, when they get flipped off the floor, like with Demon Steel pedal or whatever. A lot of characters have like a low wall hit and a wall combo that will cause them to flip that way. Like Dragon Ball's down back 2, 1, 2. You know what I'm saying? If you delay it properly. Armor King doesn't have that. I'm thinking about how his moves look right now. Yeah, does Armor anybody know if Armor King has that? Oh, by the way, I forgot to say, he has this um, down 4, 2 as a 15 frame counter hit too. It's unsafe. You can make it safe, but lose the counter hit combo with down forward 2-1. That's basically a natural combo, safe on block, mid-high string. I forgot to mention that last time when I went through down forward 2. Um, Alright, I'm not going to get too hung up on this. I'm trying to test the spit, this spit here off of a wall combo. But um, if he doesn't have it, he doesn't have it. Trying to get that to hit late, just to see. Sixteen. Okay, we got it. Way too slow. Oops. Motherfuck! Does I have to time this manually? There it is. 
Okay, see? Combo. <sighs> Alright, so <laughs> I have to make sure it was a combo if you got it to hit late. I wanted to make sure it wasn't like one of those things where even though you got that many pluses, they could still block. So this is a true 13 plus 13 to plus whatever. So the spit has 11 active frames. And that was active frame number 7. I got plus 13. So if you add another 4, you could get this as good as plus 17. If you get the very last frame. So I'm guessing that's mainly good at the wall. Uh, mid stage, I don't know if you can get anything that sets this up. Because if they tech your off axis, then that's going to ruin it. Well, I mean, I just have to see shoulder connect. So, of course, if you get 14, down back 2-4 is going to work. If you get plus 15, forward 2-1 is going to work. We just needed to verify that he definitely got guaranteed damage. That's an old move. I'm sure it was always like that. I just wanted to make sure. And I would not have even tried to do that without Tekken Bot showing active frames. Thank God for Tekken Bot, right? Shit. Yeah, I had to... I had to do it the old-fashioned way. I have to time him getting up into it. <laughs> That's not a good way to use that, obviously. You want to find a setup, and I'm guessing maybe the fucking backflip will give that to you. I don't know. Or something that spikes them down and does the whole thing where they have to hold back to wake up. Maybe one of those. I don't know. I'm sure Smodgen or some Armor King player has fancy gimmicky setups with that. But yeah, outside of that, plus seven on hit up close. No damage. Oh, sorry. 12 damage. Uh, 28 frames, so it's faster than the unblockable kick, too. Okay, uh... Where were we? That's Poison Mist. Uh, we know it doesn't track, really, because... Definitely not. Alright, so another thing that Armor King has over King, though, this, this is, in my opinion, not as big a deal. He has a standard... Not standard, but... He has a running three, a slash kick style move. That, uh, you could do out of wave that, wave wave move. If you don't fuck up like I'm doing. Oh my god, I did it. I did it there. I did it my first try before. I used to do this all the time when I played Crimson Tag Team. Anyway, um, yeah, so he has like a running three style move, a slash kick style move, and a pretty good one. It's like Miguel's. Or rather, Miguel's is like his. But, uh, you know, plus 10, significant pushback. You know how this works. It's a little more plus on block than your standard slash kick. Uh, it's also fast, 23. Like, they're usually above 25. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, good move. Good move. King only has running exploder, which Armor King also has. So, and I'm pretty sure it has the same bullshit fucking hitbox that King's does. Which is to say his upper body is a fucking hitbox too. Just like, you know, think about like a Psycho Crusher, basically, where the whole body is going to hit you. Uh... King, I don't know about Armor King, but I know King has like a bunch of setups where if he does this after a knockdown and you, you tech, his upper body is going to hit you in the back like a cross-up. So, I'll bet Armor King has that kind of shit too. I can't think of one at the moment. But, you know, that's the kind of thing you could do with this move. If you knock somebody not far away and then like they stay down and they delay their get-up or something, like off of this, they take their time to get up for whatever reason and they get up wrong, that could catch them. The other thing about this is it's um, very plus on block, right? So plus that you could do dumb weird shit like Aris does where he'll, um, he knows you're going to stay and then he'll get up an instant uh, giant swing, which awkward to execute, but now I don't think you have enough plus frames to actually make that a frame trap, but the threat of the counter hit low wake up kick, which is a juggle starter, is typically what makes people kind of stay there and guess. It allows you to just kind of get up in their face like this. God damn it, I can't do it. I'm trying to buffer it. There's a weird timing to this. There it is. If you've seen Aris play King before, you've seen him do this exact setup. So, uh, I don't know, you know, I don't know if I'll call that any good. But there's all sorts of shit you can do out of this. Basically, you can force a Waco kick mix up should you choose. That is something that they're going to have to guess. Unless it's a Kuma, I guess. Uh, you could just get up and back up. You're plus, so they're not, they get nothing guaranteed on you. Plus, a lot. Uh, this thing has seven active frames. Nothing guaranteed. So I'm going to refer to as a full-time job for that reason. <laughs> uh, I bet Lay must be paying any ass to learn to play. Not really. I went through Lay. He has a lot to remember, but 
his execution isn't that crazy. He's very straightforward. Like, his inputs, it's just you got to remember your position. This goes into this, move goes into this, this goes into this. The one really, really, really hard thing Lee has going on is if you want his perfect 12-frame punish, it's a forward neutral move. It's a 10-frame move that gets input forward neutral and then go into a string, a three-hit string. Um, outside of that, he has a lot of forward neutral inputs that I'm, I've never really played characters that have a lot of that. So that's awkward. That's just awkward, but that's not what I would call difficult to execute, you know? Like, you almost want to consider forward neutral to be a stance with it, because he goes into that razor rush, razor rush, like, pose. When you, do a, when you tap forward and neutral, he does, like, that weird step. And that has its own moves out of it. But Lay's, honestly, he has some unique mechanics with his stance. So, like I said, there's a lot to remember, but, you know, I don't think he's hard to use in regards to, like, picking up and playing him. You know? While well, a character like this is very high execution. Armor King and King are like probably below or the bottom of the high execution tier list. Like the bottom of the top. The bottom of S tier in execution. Right? <laughs> it's like King and Armor King and Brian. <laughs> Maybe Brian goes above them actually. I don't know. So yeah. Wavu Wavu. Satellite draw kick. That's his running exploder. That's what they call that shit. And then he has a unique low draw kick. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you have to punish this like a slide when you block it. I think. This used to be good in tag. In tag 2. Uh, did he have it in tag 1? I don't know. But in tag 2, you could tag out and go right into this kick when he comes running in. That was a, a kind of cool thing about tag and tag 2. They come in running. I think it was the same as Tag 1. I didn't really play Tag 1 like that. At least not a done. I, at least I didn't learn Tekken until Tekken 5. So, uh, But in Tag 2, it's like you would do a raw tag and they would come in running, basically. And it was easy. It was an easy way to set up something like this. Which is like, you cannot do this instantly. Whenever you see the input here. When you see these inputs with three forwards, you could do that instantly. This, run more than three steps, can't do it. Unless you have some sort of weird trick. You have to be spaced out. Um, let me try to, uh, it does knock down a normal hit. I don't know if he gets any guaranteed follow-ups. What's Armor King's pickup for Giant Swing? Cross cancel, down three plus four one. Not Giant Swing for um, slide. Maybe you cannot pick this up like that. Hmm. It's negative twenty four, so that should be. Oh, he could do that from crouching. I forgot. I forgot. I don't have to get up. Yeah. Lost twenty four. Don't work though. So yeah, you kind of punish that like a slide because he's low to the floor and you have to just figure out what you got to do with it. But you know, you're not going to see that as often as a slide, so. Or at all, really. <laughs> all right, snap uppercut. This is his while rising launcher, while standing launcher. 16 frames. Obviously, if you need 15 frame for a launcher, you can hop kick from crouch also. Um, the key difference here is this has more range, I'm assuming, than a hop kick. It sure does. Uh, so... <laughs> In those situations where you block like sh uh, shallow block low pokes that are like the generic the generic down threes like that that are typically negative 16 you're gonna want to do that every time don't go for this up is his uh, negative 16 yeah it is okay good. unique animation but it is negative 16 oh i forgot yeah, he can't do it from standing Try to hot kick this. See? Let's try it now while standing one. Oh, get fucked. Okay. <laughs> Some matchups just be like that, man. That's why. 
you wonder why do people use a generic down three low all the time with like certain characters and like it's negative 16 on hit on block sorry negative two to negative three on hit why do they use them it's so unsafe it's like no reward that's why that plus they usually track in both directions like you see kudans is double uses that shit all the fucking time from like back here that's how you use that kind of low poke right there man that's how you do it exactly We're saw some stagger shit like Eddie Slippery Kicks. Oh, he's one of those. That's unfortunate. They fixed that for Dragon Ball, but they didn't give Armor King that hookup. So you have to delay your punish on that, I'll bet, right? That's a classic, though. It's so fucked up, because when you block that Eddie stuff, he's so low to the floor. So low to the floor that it gets awkward to punish him, let's say. What's the freaking four tilted three or three tilted four? It's one or the other. <sighs> Swing of water for the working man. Hey, how's everybody doing today while we're uh, loading over here? That's not slippery kick, Sub Zero. Slippery kicks is the. guys don't know how fucked up that move used to be. That move used to be tag two and before. I don't even want to talk about it. You guys that are started teching with this game, you're lucky that this is what fucking happens now when you block this shit. Jesus Christ. This movie used to give me fucking fits. Let's get this shallow. There it is. There it is. So when it's shallow... Yeah, that's what you want to do, the Heihachi. You gotta do the Heihachi. You know what's fucked up? When it hits you shallow like that, I think he's. It, I think the frames are in Eddie's favor, if I'm not mistaken. I might be wrong about that. And the second low still gives him the juggle. Actually, no, I think uh, it's not quite in his favor, but he can armor you if you try to hit him. Gotta cross cancel with dash. There it is. That's how you do that, the Heihachi. Cross cancel with dash instead of uh, up. And then for good measure, same walks done off of that. Right. Oh, there it is, boy. Ha. At least the hot kick works. Hot kick works though. This is much harder to do. Because he's not as negative as he is off the slippery kicks. There you go. <laughs> Be hey Hachi. Be good. <laughs> It's not like he's like without options like Heihachi is though. If you, you know, you get garbage with Heihachi if you can't do the, uh, you get 40 damage. <laughs> and then he also, he, unlike Heihachi, he has that, which he can do here. Woo! Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> God, that is such horse shit that they kept that animation. So the actual slippery kicks, the move before that, before this game, when you block the first hit, he kept doing the kicks. And if you block both kicks, Eddie was fucking safe. You had to, like, let him take his turn. <laughs> that shit was so fucked up, bro. You had to let Eddie take his turn after blocking a launching low. He goes into handstand still. So the actual way to punish it was either to make the first hit connect and the second hit with because he didn't have armor back then and you get a guaranteed float on him. Or to block the first hit, low parry the second hit. But because of the fucked up spacing that he created, there will be times where you block the first hit, it pushes you out, and then you try to low parry the second kick, and then the second kick doesn't fucking reach you because of the pushback. Dude, 
That shit was so fucking fucked up, man. Very long overdue change on that shit. Super long. Any Eddie players? Oop, my control is uh, plugging. Any Eddie players who were fucking defending that? Bitches. Straight up bitches. He never should have had that shit. That should have always been like a trip stun when you block it. So fucked up, man. I cut you, dude. That used to get me so. And then you, we're talking about, especially in Tag 2, of all fucking games. Did you, did, you, did you guys see the kind of damage Capitals did in Tag 2? Oh my god, dude. <laughs> it wasn't just off of counter hit back one. I promise you that much. I mean, counter hit back one was the really fucked up shit, but they had high damage overall. All right, so his wild standing one is his 16 frame. Hey, only negative 10 on block at least. That's, that's pretty cool. Wait, what? Oh, two active frames? That's not right. Second bot was lying to me there. Negative nine. What are you talking about? It's only one active frame, so this will always be negative ten. So that's not bad. If you want to just force a full crouch mix it with some sort and go for a launching mid, negative ten? That's pretty good. That's a rare thing. That's why it's 16 frames. Uh, okay, so this is the counter hit shit, right? Negative 10 also, but... Oops. So this is 12 frame mid, plus 2. Counter. And he could go into a... Uh, he could go into a supercharge off of this, right? That's what they show in the trailer. Anybody know how to do that? Thank you. Thank you very much, Ransko. And then he gets like, uh, so does that give him bonus damage on the follow-up? Uh, let me just do a hit and see what happens. Oops. Nine damage versus eight damage. So it is bonus damage. So, and I'm sure he has uh, whatever the fucking pickup was in the trailer. I don't remember. So the cool thing about that is it won't happen if they block it. So you don't get fucking murdered for trying that, right? Mondo, cool. Ransko, thanks for the follow. Right. Mondo. Mondo, cool. Yeah, so yeah, it won't happen on block. So you could go for this, but on hit? Okay, and it doesn't happen on normal hit. So basically... Assuming his best damage off of this on counter hit is off of that supercharge, there's no reason not to hold up after this. Unless it gets blocked. <laughs> but uh, it, it, you know, then you want to hold back. But uh, don't hold up. But um, verify what happens and then react accordingly. And whatever the fuck the juggle is, do it. It is 12 frames. I don't know about any good ways to set this up. Anytime you're in a crouching position for some reason, like that, and you notice that they mash out of it, I guess that's an option. It's a fast one. Um, oh, yeah, he doesn't have... Oh, he does. It's not a bad setup for this, honestly. Down four. He's negative two, so it's going to come and hit him on the 14th frame. Hit him at 14 frames, so that could interrupt a lot of things. And you duck under highs there, too, so... I don't know if the actual move ducks under highs. Probably not, right? Yeah, I didn't think so. But if I try to hot kick, for example, it won't counter it, obviously, but you know. See? Basically, as far as eating counter hits, you risk eating magic fours, you know? But uh, generally, uh, 14 frames it exchanges with in this situation. There aren't very many 14 frame counter hit jungle starters that are mid. It's typically Magic 4. And Claudio's down for to other stuff. Which is unsafe for Claudio. Uh, let's see how this tracks. I forgot to test uh, while standing once tracking also. So we're going to do down 4 to test. It's only negative 2, thankfully. As expected. Okay. Pretty much what I expected. It, it tracks the way it looks like it should track, right? Mm, interesting. So 
his left side is covered so far. I bet you, though, if he hits you with this, you won't be able to go either way. Well, I mean, it forces cross, so I'm only going to be able to go left. But we saw earlier I was able to go left versus while standing one, right? But now, when that hits me... Oh, never mind. It's super linear. All right. Uh, let's try it until while standing two. Yep, there you go. It's too fast, basically, is what I'm getting at here. Plus five is enough to make that shit unsteppable. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know if he has any force crouch. Uh, does he have any force crouch that leaves him crouching other than down two? That's plus on block. Because that's plus on block, but he forces the opponent to crouch, not himself. Ah, right, well, fuck it. Uh, oh, this is the fucking... Alright. I think this is... I'm pretty sure this is an old move. But this is plus one. So, treat it just like down three. You get a uninterruptible giant swing. Well, mostly uninterruptable. It's like two moves that'll interrupt it, right? Three if you count DPs. But, um, it's plus one and it's a jungle starter on counter hit, right? Yeah, there you go. It's a mid, too? I didn't realize it was a mid. So that's why it's so slow. <coughs> it's a normal hit? Wait, what? Normal hit? Ooh, that's good. That's better than I thought. Man, that's cheap. I thought that was a counter hit tool. Was it always like that? See, this is what happens, man. I I played him for a bit, but I just used basic shit that every fucking armor king uses. I didn't really look through his move list. So if he had something like this before, man, I was missing out. It's really in Tekken 7 where I started doing this kind of thing. It's good. I mean, whatever the juggle is, whatever, is whatever it is, but that's good. Down back three. Oh, down back three. Good man. Thank you very much, Just Hawking. Great setup. What? Same situation as this on hit, except it's a low, so it's a pretty high chance that you will hit it. And this is a move that you'll be using every once in a while. Don't whore it out. A lot of, like, mid-level Armor King players will whore this shit out. Plus five, sweep, counter hit, juggle, blah, 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 right? But it's, like, very unsafe, you know? it's I wouldn't say it's super seeable. Unless you're, like, spamming it as your primary low, then it might get dumb. And it might be kind of seeable. For some real sharp players, at least. Especially offline. Uh, so, yeah. Down back four, though, uh, knocks down. <laughs> Ratsko knows what's up. Of course I am. Believe me, I've been a mid-level player for so fucking long. I learned second in 5.0 mainly DR in Chinatown Fair, New York City, right? I would say I got to be mid-level in tag uh, in the end of Tekken 6. I got to be what your average mid-level player. Let's call them currently red ranks in Tekken 7 Season 2, right? Which I am right now, but, like, I haven't exactly made an effort to get higher. That's why. But, um, you know, I've seen a lot of this stuff. <laughs> and it's very easy to copy and paste, which is why they're all doing it. It's very easy to do this. It's a throw. It's very easy to do this. It's a this. It's very easy to do this. Uh, it's very easy to do this. It's a giant swing. You know what I'm saying? This mixed up with hop kick. I know all this. Do something with pushback and to do a shining wizard. I mean, it's fucking, you, know, you know the deal. And almost never this, almost never this properly, just randomly. <laughs> never look for a whiff and do that. Never. <laughs> it's just I'm just gonna throw it out. I'll also randomly throw that out too. Don't forget about that. And they're all like, well, most of them, they're all good moves, you know easy to see why they're so good so yeah this is a really good fucking move shit that's a very good move fuck and that's why it's 24 frames because it's not a block punish it's a thing you just kind of do when you're crouching in someone's face every once in a while and it's slow enough to catch people that hesitate there are people that like they'll they'll get super defensive but the moment they'll see something weird they'll do like a delayed swing right and i i try to do that more often as like a tactical thing right Especially against those people that like to be like, oh, low parry stand, low parry stand. That doesn't stop me from going low. That makes me delay the low. 
and I still go low, and then that's why they're like, oh, they'll, they'll duck in front of me. It's like, I'm still gonna go low, then they'll stand and they get hit by the fucking low. <laughs> so, same thing. Like, if you finally get someone like me that's doing something like that in response, you might catch me, you know? And if it gets blocked, well, it's in your favor. That's kind of how you use a move like this, you know? And it might get people to get sick of getting hit by it or dealing with it, so they might start swinging with faster stuff, and it sets up your faster stuff. And yada, 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 right? Now, you can, unfortunately, because the it, it overlaps with a uh, actual crouch dash uh, input, since it's a down forward plus uh, two, you can't really seamlessly do this from crouch dashing unless you cancel to full crouch first with like a down back, maybe. Even then, it doesn't, doesn't seem like you can do it. Yeah, it's kind of where you have to pause. There's no like seamless way to do it like there is with crouch dash into instant uh, while standing like I just did there. So if there is a trick, I don't know it. I feel like you have to just stop for a moment and then do it. So you kind of have to like just crouch in someone's face and then be brave. Um, the tracking on this is going to be weird because it's a slow move. Oh, don't, don't full crouch, I forgot. He has a unique full crouch one. I mean, his down four is unique in general because it's slower. But the standing version is negative two. Okay, and it tracks to his... It seems like so far everything from while standing naturally tracks to his left side. So going left against his uh, ducking options might be, might be very effective. So far. And yeah, those were all his... Wow. Well, it's not talking about while standing four because it's generic. It's weird how older characters get this sort of treatment. I, I never understood why. While standing three is also semi-generic, apparently. Is that is that a generic? I think that's a generic. I think this is a a, a legacy move. I might be wrong. That might be a generic while standing three. Sixteen frame high, zero on block. Eh? Nothing special on counter except it does a shitload of damage. But uh, <laughs> interesting move. It's not useless. Oh, he has a back three that overlaps with. No, you can still get it. There it is. You can still get it. Yeah, I don't know why you would want to wave dash into that, but you can do it. <sighs> okay, and then while standing four, he has... Unfortunately, he doesn't have the good Mishima while standing four. That's plus, like, seven or eight. It's plus five, so it's pretty much generic. Pushes out, like always. Uh, and then on block, it also kind of pushes out a little bit, and it's negative six. So if you get them to block the tip, it's a great setup for back dash. Look for a dark upper. Right. Or back dash forward two one or whatever. Back dash down back two four, right? All that good shit. Let's see it in action, folks. Ooh. Yeah, so if I go for a single fast recovery poke, I can get away with it. But if I go for anything slow... Too much range. So another good thing about Armor King, I said it before. A lot of really good ranged with punishers. He has no shortage, so you're good, you're covered. Um alright, next death sandwich. We talked about this earlier. First take got nerfed. Yes, you can hit confirm it. Let me show you how. Not raw hit confirm, but with now if you're wondering why I always record this off of a jab, jab is typically the fastest whiff recovering thing in the game. Because it costs like zero blocks done, and it it's plus one, so it recovers like that. Uh, so the idea here is you sidestep, you confirm the you, you you throw out the first hit without confirming, and you confirm off the second hit. And this is how you can practice it on a computer, because um, 
you know, if you want to do it yourself, you don't have to only do it when they attack you. You could set it up yourself like this, and you can do the exact same thing. Big part of Kazumi's game plan, by the way. Uh, and you should practice it like this. And then you confirm it. And you get good at that, and you can do that with any sort of, like, natural combo that's relatively fast. 15 frames, I would call the limit on the jab, uh, with the single jab. And, uh, you know, it's a risk of work because you're sidestepping coming to a button. That's what allows you to get hit by tracking moves and holding moves. And then you can also just sidestep into nothing. But the thing is, if you try to do that, and you try to hit confirm on, on a whiff, right? Like that, right? I'm not going to wait for him to whiff and try to... I have to be so sharp just to get 14 frames. Nope, oh, see? That's why when you see, for example, this is why I suspect when you see Mr. Naps play Brian and he's sidestepping up close, he with punishes with 1-4. Sorry, forward 1-4 because Brian has sidestep 1, which overlaps, so you have to press forward 1-4. He with punishes with jabs instead of down forward 2-1 because he knows that reacting, that's going to be consistent no matter what they with, including a single jab. You start to be sharp. See, I, I, I'm trying to back one too. See, even even that's just hard. Now you can practice it and try to get good. I feel like the li absolute limit for whiffing a jab, if you're really sharp, is 13 frames. I really do. That's what I feel like, reasonably. But even then, it's like, oh, it's so fucking hard. But if you sidestep and you just commit to a button that combos it to another button, no matter which character you're playing as, you can make a combo. That sandwich is 15 frames, and it naturally comes out of a sidestep. So it comes out faster. It feels like it comes out faster. I might be wrong. It comes out faster. It feels like it comes out faster than if I were to like sidestep into like a down forward one or something. You know? What's up, Milo? I was just talking about you earlier. I was like, yo, this guy Milo's a fucking piece of trash. <laughs> I hope you're doing all right, Milo. So yeah, Death Sandwich. To recap, first hit got nerfed. Used to knock down on normal hit. Uh, first hit is uh, unsafe at negative uh, 12, was it? And then the second hit can interrupt. And the second hit by itself still bounds, right? Bam. Yeah, and you still got a combo. So it's a natural combo. Second hit is pretty low damage. At least uh, it doesn't start to scaling until after the bound. And he's still got a core screw, so that's cool. Buzzsaw kick to G. Sidestep four. This is a counter hit juggle starter. And if you look at Little Majin's YouTube, I mentioned this earlier, he talked about setups for this. Like basically guaranteed combo in there for the unblockable. And one of the first uh, options he's showing it off of was comboing off of this. On counter hit, side step four, negative twelve. But you know, the angle gives you all sorts of funky shit. You know. Uh, I don't know what the best juggle is, honestly. It's probably ending with this, honest with you, if you can get those juggles consistently. But uh, yeah, that's a counter hit juggle starter. And if you get them to block the tip of this, it might be. Either difficult or impossible to punish for some characters. So that's the cool thing, because he barely moves forward and he pushes back the opponent a little bit. It gets even crazier if you sidestep right, because then he pushes them off axis. So yeah, you could space this out to make it funky like that. Funky like a monkey. Stand still and do it. See? See? That's my 12 frame. And my jabs. So Armor King at the tip will not be able to punish this. I'm always on normal hit. Damn, it knocked.
knocks down a normal hit. That's why it's unsafe. If it didn't knock down a normal hit, this shit would totally be safe. Yeah, I should definitely pump this one up, right? This is a classic that everybody loves. Did the actual best Tekken 2 theme come up yet? The head, the head shaker. Oh no, that's coming up. All right, good. Yeah, Tekken 2 has the bangers, right? Tag 1 might have the best overall bangers though. Tag 1 and uh, if you, it's, this is kind of cheating, but Tekken 5 and DR combined. <laughs> Probably the best overall Tekken soundtrack. Right? <laughs> is it really cheating though? DR is basically Tekken 5 expansion. Right? Uh, okay, so. Tracking wise, the sidestep move. So much like with that sandwich, I'm going to guess. If it naturally tracks on one side, it will not. But it's going to track in the direction that you step. Not true tracking, but you know, it's going to realign. Oh, never mind. Death Sandwich. Oh, Death Sandwich tracks to his left. I love that he still... I, I don't even know if that's fucking intentional, but he does the fucking slap. <laughs> the cane. That's how they make the sound effect, the throat thrust. <laughs> ah. It's like when people slap their legs during insecurities and super kicks. I know, uh, I don't know if he does in this game. Does he do it in this game? Oh, he does in this game, but they don't have the sound effect. Yeah, he slaps his ass. That's supposed to be how you make the, the kick sound effect when you're doing pro wrestling. And in the older games, you would hear that sound effect on whip. He would slap the shit out of his leg. <laughs> that is such a great touch. So anyway, uh, so that sandwich, if you wanted to track in both directions, essentially, you should go right with it, apparently. Unless that's just an Armored King quirk where he's bad at sidestepping in one direction like Marta. Who knows? Let's check this. There it is. I gotta time it. Let's double check that sandwich. Hold on. There it is. Okay. Realignment. But you can't. You have to time it. So you have to. Yeah. Oof. You have to time that shit. Alright, neck cutter. This is the other insecurity, right? Yep. I don't know if there's any pickups off of this shit. Man, that keeps him super far away. I think at certain angles, this used to give you uh, a pickup, right? Trying to get up into. Damn it! All right, so that get up makes you okay. What the? Damn it! He can't instantly do the full cross ollie kick. Damn. Is there any pickup off of that? For a juggle? I feel like there used to be. There is guaranteed follow-ups at the very least, if not a pickup. It is a high, negative six. Interesting positioning. He gets the ooh. He gets that wake-up kick. Throwbacks. Up low block. Oh, yikes. Okay. Oh, my God. All right. I guess. Ooh, Ooh that's bad. That's a bad position to be in. Bad position to be in. Well, 
blind kick back towards enemy. Ah, that's a great way to set this up. Yes. So we talked about 3 plus 4 earlier. He's got unique options. Unfortunately, the nerf to uh, generic throws actually kind of messes with the mix-ups you could do from back turn. Those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, in the older games, generic throws, you have to break by hand, right? You have to visually see two or one, break one or two. And then uh, when you're back turn, no generic throws come out like this. And you don't know what to break, so it's a 50-50 on guessing the break. So that was one of the things you can do out of this. But now they can press either punch, and I don't think he has a command grab So from back turn. So it's no real mix-up here, unfortunately. Uh, but, you know, that doesn't mean he can't do the generic low poke, which is plus three on hit, right? And ten frames. And he can mix that up with the mids. So still, at least he has that. That's one of them. And a normal hit that does uh, that stun, which I know he can pick up off areas. He can. It's actually easy to do. Uh, but they are at a at, at a slightly off axis angle, so that might mess with like the uh, shining wizard grab in the end. Uh, it might limit the juggle opportunities depending on what axis you connect that on. But that is on normal hit. Negative twenty on block though. Makes you eat shit. Negative 10 with pushback on the back turn 4, though. Uh, and I think that still hits grounded, right? Ooh, boy. Yeah, it seems like you have to walk it. Oh man, at least with Armor King, he has to walk it right. That would be why it's so bad on block. <laughs> In my opinion. If it's that difficult to step around it, it means you have to block it. It better, better be fucking bad on block. And then turning so loud. Counter properties here, just to knock back with a chunk of damage and a lot of pushback on block. <sighs> with good range, put that move in the garbage. <laughs> It'll be sick of generic throws from back to work the other way. Yeah, honestly, all I ever wanted with the throws was a bigger break window. Now that they did that, I think that making generic throws like, you know, not have like you know either punch. I think that's whack. They should have left generic throws to be one and two break. Because it feels like, why even use generic throws anymore, you know? It's like, whatever. Throws were never a mix-up. They were like a reaction check that in the heat of the moment really tested you. Unless, you know, giant swing and, and of course, multi-parts. Obviously, you also break the rule. But, um... Which is another way he could mix out of uh, Wave Dash, by the way. Wave Dash into a multi-part, which is either one or two break, but looks like one plus two. But, yeah. Uh, I don't like the tendency for new, that newer players are having in calling command grabs throw mix-ups. They're not. The only throw mix-up is giant swing. Like, you know, breaking the rules, basically. Giant swing and multi-parts. Those are throw mix-ups. Or, I guess, unbreakable throws. That's a throw mix-up, like Akuma. Right? You know? Even if this were a command grab and you have to break it one and two, it's a reaction. It's a reaction check. That's all that it is. It's a reaction check. This throw is so fucking cool. <laughs> that is such a sick throw. You'll never see that shit in an actual pro wrestling match, I hope. Crazy Stomp. Ah, this is the Zero Oki grounded hitting option. I think in the older game, you were able to tech out of the uh, third stomp, right? Or the second stomp or some shit. And that's why people... One of the reasons why people only did like the first two stomps is that and it gave Oki... I don't know if that's the case here. Woo! Okay, so 
I can hold back. But that's definitely good Oki, because I have to block that shit. Now if I do three, let's see what happens now. Kind of the same. Interesting. Oh, there it is. Okay, man, you were wrong. Okay, okay, it's the same. It's the same. Now, if you combo, what combo? Is Shop, right? Cross dash. Now it's guaranteed. <laughs> yeah, okay. So it has to combo, or they're gonna tech out of it. So that stomp kind of works the same. So then the question is, if you do one, I mean, why do one then, right? It's shit damage. Actually, no, that's not shit damage at all. It's 16 damage. Fuck. That's more damage than down three. Okay, so one down four is still good. So it's kind of like, it's pretty much how it was in tag, too, then. I thought they changed this. I don't know why. But the Oki's not as good, right? Yeah, because I'll be able to tech. But, I mean, honestly, the Oki is still good. I teched and I had to block that. I couldn't armor through it. I was forced to block. Yep, I'm basically forced to block if I tech there. What if I tech it the other way? Nope. Oh, but if I tech the other way, I'm already out of the way of the down forward one. So, that still gets decent Oki, though. You gotta play around with it, but only do the first hit. Don't mash that one out, because you're in trouble if they tech. In big trouble. In big trouble. Oh, he still got multiple 10 hits? Lucky guy. That's why the, I, that's why I missed the down forward 2-1, because it's part of his 10 hit. It's one of those where the first, like, two hits are good. Okay, wait, there's no low here? It's an unblockable high in the end, but... Okay, third hit. Got it. Always on a third hit. Yeah, no matter which one he does, that looks so cool. No matter which one he does, it's a low on the third hit. Okay. I wonder something about that. Nothing. Nothing. It is negative three, though. So if you want to add some damage, you can kind of try to steal around with that. Law style. Law, uh, well, you don't know. Law's, uh, ten hit that starts with off of his down forward one. It goes into a down forward one and then a low poke. If the low poke hits you, the third and the fourth hit combo on natural combo. Very common round ender. Not just round ender, I see it in the middle of matches too. It's probably unsafe on hit though, if I were to guess. Or just like really bad on hit in general. Uh, Alright, so generic throws. Knee bash. Turn. Who was it that did that as a finisher? Somebody in the 80s in Japan did that shit as a finisher. Or like a trademark move. In that way, like holding the head to the knee and then lifting the knee, and bam! I think it was Jumbo Saruda. It might have been Jumbo Saruda. Well, Jumbo Saruda definitely did the jumping knee. I know that. All right. Well, knee bash. Um, if he recovered faster, that would be great. Oki. I mean, it probably okay. Ooh, wait. That might still be good. Oki. If only uh, regular throws didn't suck. Let's see. That positioning is historically. That position, historically, has been really good for armor game.
because of forward two one hitting you if you try to wake up backwards. It doesn't look he has that though. Oops. Let's try one frame faster. Oh, nope. And then down forward one is gonna whiff the old back. I mean, the Oki is probably still in his favor, but nothing like... He doesn't have any real good way to actually really kill somebody trying to get up. He can just force a 50-50 here. It says he's negative one. So that's so. Uh, that's 14 for him. Positioning still works in his favor, so that's fine. Suplex! So I don't think there's really good Oki off of this. But the way this works is this grab, if you press down, 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 one plus two, he does the Steiner screwdriver. SSD! And it does, ooh, they nerfed the shit out of it. It used to do five more damage. Right? 35 to 40, I think. Now he does three more damage. That's not worth throwing away, putting yourself in the mix-up. Because that's what happens when you land this grab. You put yourself in the mix-up. Because he recovers like shit off of it. I'll show you what I mean in a second. I mean, honestly, it was never worth putting yourself in a mix-up He does the stalling suplex, the classic, while King does the snap suplex, right? I think that's how it works. Nothing. Welcome to the chat room. What the fuck? My chat is, oh uh, yeah, so Twitch chat is fucking up. Yeah, Twitch chat keeps resetting and shitting itself. Maybe they didn't want that to be too good because that's the easy option off the rage drive. Uh, yeah, if they want, if you want 40 damage, you gotta do Shining Wizard. Yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, that's a bad reason. That's a real bad reason. I don't like that as a reason. Um, I mean, you know, generic those are bad enough as it is, right? Uh, it seems like the Oki is similar to uh, his other grab, but. It keeps them further away to so set up better with punishes, maybe? Honestly, you can set up with punishes on both. Seems to be a similar uh, recovery situation. But anyway, let me show you what I mean here. Um, I'm going to do. I'm going to mash out down forward one, right? I one up you. I'm doing a low to wake up. Let's see what happens. That's how bad it is. It beats out hop kicks, crush frames. So yeah, yeah, you can still a little parry. And that's what I would suggest you doing. If you're gonna guess the mix up there, um, what's that low kick on block actually? Let me see. Let me make sure that that low kick is this. Is uh, what I think it is. Negative 13. So my suggestion would be if you're going to guess like Waco kick mix up, low parry versus stand block. Let me make sure you can low parry there. I'm sure you can. But... Ooh, this is the Tekken 2 credits that they remixed in Tag 2. You're definitely gonna low parry out my ankle. Um, and then mid, mid wake up kick is in this position. Negative 14. So if you're good, you can dark upper. If you're me, you can down back 2 4. <laughs> Not good. Um, <clears throat> Alright. Reverse Death Valley bomb. Just call it the burning hammer. Cause that's what it fucking is. Alright. Burning hammer! Ooh, that 
I think it gets good okay. How good? I don't know. Was it left side? Can't even input a regular throw. Ooh. When you see that kind of thing happen, that means don't hold back. Oh, never mind. This is second seven. <laughs> never mind. Second seven breaks the old rules. At least holding back still forces me to block it. That's a good sign. Because fairly often when you do that back get up, it makes like mids whiff. But King is like, no, Armor King is like, no, you gotta block this shit. So block mid, guess versus the low. So that's not bad. I mean, you can get greedy and want guaranteed stuff all the time, you know, but whatever. Let's try 14. Maybe I was slow. Maybe I was slow. It's 14, 15 hit him in a different kind of way, right? Like that. Still be guaranteed there. How fast is down for? Nah, definitely not. <laughs> Wishful thinking. What happens if I hold back? Just gotta see if it whips. Okay, cool. That also hits grounded, right? So yeah, all right. You could you could force a 50-50 there if you would like. And uh, the low, does it lose out to anything? get too crazy testing side throws but I was curious because it looked like good positioning so. in case you don't know how to break side throws by the way assuming it's the same as it was before you have to press based on the direction that they grab you from if they grab you on your left side you have to break with one if they grab you in your right side you have to break with two. Oh, he hits him with the inverted uh, brain buster Does the scorpion death drop? Yeah. The reverse DD2. Which is actually what it really is. <laughs> uh, but that looks like a good, good Oki. Honestly. What happens if he does giant swing from the back? Because that's a punish for like certain things. He gets that. Okay, so it's worth testing. First it hits, we know the second it hits. So. Well, probably. <laughs> Let me not say that for sure. Oh, yes. Ooh, let's make sure that that axis doesn't fuck it up, though. That 
that's what I've been looking for. I know he still had oh, too slow. I know he still had to have it somewhere. Two break. Classic. But no real OK off for that. The spacing is not good. So if they really hold back. The AI lies here. You see how he's like, um, hold on a second. Okay. So is there anything that reaches? Um Damn it, do down back too. Alright, nothing really reaches. Uh, what I was gonna say is the AI lies here with stand up, wake up backwards. It does, but it lets go. If you hold backwards yourself, you actually create more space. But in this instance, it's, no, it's not worth showing. Because it whips anyway. Uh, Tombstone Pile Driver. This is what you do off of the Rage Drive if you connect it close, if you want damage. It's 58 damage. Second two song. I know you guys love that fucking Kazuya song, but weird. That should not be possible. I put the wrong thing, that's why. What? Come on, AI. How many frames do you have? I thought it was 13. It's like, it makes it annoying to test this because that doesn't seem right. Unless you have more than 13 and you can just hold forward and grab. Yeah, see? easy to do either. But if you're not up close, which is a high chance that that'll happen in the heat of the match, with you know everybody's moving backwards all the time, uh, you have to do like instant shining wizard if you want damage out of that. <sighs> you get full. Okay. Okay, so it's more than 13 frames. Mark Friend was wrong. I mean, maybe he was just guessing based on the grabs that he was doing. Because uh, forward grabs are 15 frames. So it's more leaning than I thought. Neutral grabs are 12 frames. Which do not reach. 
And uh, a tombstone, according to the second bot at least, is 11 frames. Which, which means you can kind of step forward or delay it a moment. It seems like you have to delay it a moment to get it. So yeah, Tombstone has like no Oki also, but it's 58 damage. And I think it floor breaks. <laughs> Doesn't it? Speaking of, I think Steiner Screwdriver might floor break too. I've never been good at this, this is a weird input. Yep, that was down back two. You could do down back two four and shit, right? And then, uh. So, oh wow, that recovered crouching. No, that was just me inputting weird. Okay, so that's an easier thing to do, I guess. So yeah, uh, you got an easy mode floor break option, and you got a harder one for more damage. So this is especially good in this stage. You know, th this being the rage drive. And much like regular King, he could do a launch right into Instant Shining Wizard and break the floor and do a shitload of damage. Alright, DDT. This is uh, one of those things you can do from crouching. But you're gonna get that by accident if you try to wave that shit to it. DDT has to be from. St Actually, no, you don't do it from crouching. I'm sorry. If you do that shit from crouching, you're gonna get the electric chair driver. Um, from standing. That's probably not called electric chair driver in the <laughs> movements. That's what it, called, what it would be called in the actual pro wrestling match. The sitting position on the shoulders, that's called the electric chair. And then you do something out of it, so electric chair, power bomb, or driver, or whatever. This is a regular ass DDT. I wish he slapped the back. <laughs> he slaps everything else for like the moves. You should grab him and then slap the back and then do the DDT. Anyway, it doesn't look like there's any Oki here. You're all the way over here. And you fall down, so. Yeah, nah, no Oki off of this. It is a true one plus two break and an easy one to do. Here's an easier one, even. That does more damage? Well, no, it's the same damage, but it certainly looks cooler. Uh, no Oki, but I wonder. Ooh. Well, I wonder. Now, when your back is to the wall, we all know Giant Swing is dangerous. When King and Armor King, when your back is to the wall, Giant Swing is dangerous because you cannot tech it. You're going to get thrown into the wall and you're going to take like 50 or 60 or whatever the fuck it is, right? But if his back is to the wall when he does this, he's going to be right in on top of you, right? Will that give him any Oki is the question. It's like the old Dragon Off 2 plus 4 trick. When his back is to the wall and he does the 2 grab, it switches sides whether he's, su he's successful or you break it. But when he hits you, when he's successful, he actually used to have, I don't know about now, used to have really good Oki off. Super situational here, and now we've like switched sides. The fuck? Oh shit! <laughs> I 
I gotta say, I didn't expect that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> was it here? Or was it the other way? Oh, we gotta figure this one out. Might not get anything. Oh, shit. Burning hammer. Uh, oof. You could definitely play around with this a lot and come up with some unique shit, it looks like. I'm not gonna go much further than here. I verify that you get some sort of wall splat. Whether that gives you anything afterwards or not is up in the air. That could be a wall break in some stages. Yeah, that's one of the coolest looking throws in the game, in my opinion. What's up, Frozen Zerker? arm swing that's his giant swing you guys know how giant swing works right 10 frame grab you it looks like a one plus two break you have to break it with one you can tack it when he throws you what does that mean i mean you guys know this right but just in case anybody out there on youtube watching he successfully grabs you if you don't press anything he gets 65 damage so, you gotta mash all the buttons, and then you only take 45 instead, which is still a lot of damage. Which is why when the wall switch back, you're gonna eat 66 damage, I think? Because you can't tech, it throws you to the wall. So yeah, that's like the king grab, right? Everybody knows this shit. And if he grabs you out of the air, it does this pogo stick shit, which looks, which looks really fucking cool. Brilliant Brawler Kick. Shining Black, as I like to call it. The Shining Wizard. What is, you know. Is there anything to say about this? It's another one, a true one plus two break. With good damage. Uh, I don't know about the Oki, but. Um, yeah, good damage. If you grab him out of the air, he does the running power bomb. And it animates at 10 frames. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to get this as a 10 frame move. Like, ever. You're not gonna get this as like, oh, I blocked, and I'm gonna do this at 10 frames, because the input won't allow you to get that. You can, however, buffer Giant Swing. I don't know why Giant Swing breaks the buffering rule, but it does. See, Giant Swing breaks the buffering rule. You can do that at 10 frames. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that he does a fo two uh, multiple forward inputs. I don't know. I guess I should talk about how to do instant shining wizard, right? So instant shining wizard, which is less important in this game than it used to be for jungles. I mean, even then, attack to it wasn't very important, uh, but it's still important, especially in the floor break stage. My only trick, everybody kind of has their own trick, I guess. My only trick is to input every forward, uh, in, uh, make sure there's a neutral after every forward input. Forward, forward, forward. And on the last forward, do that quickly. Forward, neutral, forward, neutral, forward. And on the last forward, input the two plus four as if it were a just frame. Like, bam, on the same time as the forward. That seems to make it more consistent for me. Right? Now, I'm going to suck at it because, um, you know, I used to, I did this trick with Dragon Off. That's how I learned tricks. I used to have Dragon Off as my secondary. But, you know, I'm very out of practice. But as you can see, I just, what was it? Out of six times, I did it, what, four? So, you know. Just practice it until you get it. That's all I could say. And that's one of those things you got to keep practicing to stay sharp on. And yes, you can do it at a wave dash. 
out of uh, any sort of cross ash input, if you input the um, end of it as a core circle forward instead of down down forward, you're going to get the first forward out of it. That's going to buffer a forward for you. So if you put forward neutral, quarter circle forward, forward forward, 2 plus 4, and you can get it. And it works! You just got to put the time and practice in if you want to use that shit, you know? And of course, like I said before, you can mix it up with a uh, giant swing out of uh, Wave Dash. You can do it faster than I did it there for sure. And then you want to do everything you want to, you want to practice all this on the two player side too. My two player side is weak. Because it's different. It feels different. You're doing a different motion with your wrists, even with your thumb, pretty much. If you're playing on pad. So yeah, very good stuff, obviously. Uh, Demon Bomb, what's up, Concrete? Is that Concrete? Concretely, that's a, I like that name. Concretely? Concre concretely. <laughs> what's going on? Uh, Crouch Guard, okay, Demon Bomb. Oh, that's the fucking Michinoku driver. All right, so he's got the Michinoku driver. Oh, by the way, Crouch Grabs are true 50-50 breaks. Gas breaks. He, I don't think he has like a King Jaguar step. I forget if it's Jaguar step one or two, which gives him a guaranteed crouch grab attempt. I don't, I don't know if he has anything like that, to be honest with you. That's plus nine. Does that give it to him? I don't think so. Nah, he needs more than that. Oh shit, Gandryu's thing is pretty sick too. Damn it, forward two, dumbass. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm pressing the one too early. Because he recovers so slow out of it. I'm just gonna match forward too so we'll know it's guaranteed a minute. I should record it actually. So is it truly guaranteed if we get up? Animation is so long that I have to match it a lot more, apparently. Yeah. Yep. Alright, let's stand straight up. I am holding back, so. Actually, what was it before? Uh, was it the um, burning hammer? I didn't test stand straight up off of the burning hammer. Oh no, the back throw. The back throw. That's what it was. I tested holding back. Okay, well, it's still good there. But uh, off of the crouch grab, the Michinoku driver, demon bomb as we say here. Uh, if you hold back, forward two is guaranteed on, on you, on you. Not on your back so much, maybe. I don't know. But it seems to be like, you know, it's going to hit you. All right, spinning leg lock. Is that spinning toe hold? It sure is. The Terry Funk or the, the Dory Funk special. Doesn't look like there's any good Oki off of that. Like, the positioning is basic. Yeah, and it whiffs. Bad positioning for Oki. That's typically how these go, right? When you got a situation like this, one has to be more rewarding than the other for some reason. Stand up. While enemies down. This is only good at the wall. Which means mid stage is ground throw in this situation. Not too great. At the wall, he gets a guaranteed uh, 2 1. And I think I've heard in some instances he can still get the old back 1 2 from tag 2. 
But yeah, at the wall, if you do like a wall splat, one, two, and then do this, and then he pushes him against the wall, you can get two, one on most characters now. Which sets up all sorts of crazy shit at the wall. All sorts of mix ups, uh, mix up opportunities. This could wall splat, I believe, if the wall's to your back. Okay, there, just to 30 damage. This gives him another guaranteed ground grab attack, just like with King. I don't know if it gives him any guaranteed attacks, but he could go for another ground grab. Ankle lock. Turn him around. The burning lariat, Kobashi. That does a lot, actually. 40 instead of 30 back mount and then he gets back of the head punches and I believe when you there when he's on your back when you tackle someone's back you cannot I think you cannot counter or block the punches there's the pogo step grab not much to talk about here I think the Oki is better than the shining wizard grab yeah it's kind of far you can see it already if I try to like forward two of the whip, they hold back. But here, they're uh, head toward face down. So unless it's Marduk, that's definitely a better Oki positioning for you. block it, but you can force it 50-50. Counter. Only for punches. Oh, shit. He does the Chris Benoit. Crippler cross face. Oh, he has a fake out punch. That's a counter hit move. Out of that. I forgot about that. Try to react to the move. Here it goes. Multi parts. So the thing about Armor King's multi parts uh, at a cross dash, I think that's the only time they come out for him. Uh, if they're like Kings where, you know, they break the rule, they look like one plus two break, but it's one or two depending on if he inputs this or. Or what the fuck? Where's the other one? Oh, sorry. Whether he inputs 1 plus 4 or 2 plus 3. Uh, it, it's going to start the same. But depending on how he inputs it, that's how you have to break. So you have to guess 50, uh, between 1 or 2 on the break off this crowd stack. The downside to his multi-part, though, is that you could break each individual option. While King, you get, you get uh, a chance to break every other option, depending on which one he uses. The long ones, you know? Nelson suplex, one break. Sleeper hold is a two break.
that's a one plus two break, the neck drop. So he has a three-way guess on the second grab. Sleeper gives him two options. So. And the neck drop gives him two options. So if you want to play the mind game here and guess, Flying Half Nelson, which was the one break, is the least damaging one. If you want to talk about like the mind game, right? Because he doesn't have a third part. 45 total. I'm guessing he's still going to do less damage. Uh, if he in here. Yeah, see? 35. Makes sense. But the potential on the third grab makes it higher damage. Thirty-eight damage on that one. How's AK's tracking as a whole? Ah, uh, shit. Good question. Uh, I've been kind of testing it mindlessly, move my move, but I haven't been retaining it very well. It doesn't feel that bad though, right? Like I have trouble remembering specific moves. <laughs> uh, forward two still tracks well to one side. His while standing only tracks to one side, while standing uh, his left side. So that that's a thing to to consider. But um, his down forward one tracks to one side, obviously, like most. Didn't it track to both sides, actually, for him? The thing is, I've been testing it with Armor King, and he is a bulky character. So, like, against, like, Lily, you're going to have to kind of eat shit and time shit better. But um, it doesn't seem too bad, honestly. Shit. I got to watch back my own shit to remember which specific moves. Uh, he has good homing moves. 4-4-3, four, four, zero on block. That's a good home, and he has a good gimmick out of it too. If you want to spear people, it's a frame trap on block. Oh, I gotta turn this shit up. So this is the triple double. So if he goes into the sleeper, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. All right, fifty-five total damage. Sleeper. One break. Let's see if two breaks is the case. And one plus two is not right there. And then, uh, human necktie. Oh, wait. Neck drop does have follow ups. They were just hidden in the bottom here. How did I miss these the first time? Never mind. They all, they all have follow ups. Ooh, the neck drop might be the most damaging one. Ooh. Oh, the Brock Lock. When I used to do some uh, backyard wrestling, I got put in that submission. It feels weird because, like, your nut sack is hanging in a very awkward thing. <laughs> When you're wearing pants, when you're wearing tights, that's not a problem. How the fuck did I break that? What the hell? I broke the other one with one. Okay, it is two. I was just pressing it too late. So it's one, one or two in that chain. Uh, all right. Oh, no, I was right. Flying half nothing is the one that doesn't have follow-ups. Sorry. Flying Half Nelson is the highest damage on the second part than these two, but these two continue and you get another break chance. So I'm guessing here for Choke Sleeper and Three Count Pound is uh, one or two break also, right? That's a one break. Cool looking one. Cool looking break too. 60 damage. Yeesh. thing as uh, the other one. So the more damaging option here is the two break, but it's only three more damage. Seems like you might be able to punish him when you break this. How the 
gonna end up back up here. That's the multi part. Very straightforward multi part. You don't have a building in them to remember like you do with King. Very straightforward. You can play your mix up game out of this, and you can do it out of Wave Dash, and it's usable. It's very usable. Now, it looks like when you break these, you might get, if not guaranteed damage, you might get some good Oki versus them, depending on your character. Very character dependent stuff. But, like, that's a very hard thing to set up. chicken wing suplex come on guys for like paying homage to like wrestling moves they do a very poor job of naming them so that's a regular ass break half nelson is when you have that arm up because you got your hand on the back of their head and then you fucking kenta kobashi them across the ring on the top of their head So it's end, the end, right? <sighs> yeah, so it doesn't like you literally get anything guaranteed. I'm gonna try 16 frames. Be able to get up in time. low block right well at least like a low parry I guess oh, I can't low parry from getting up I'm trying to low block let's see what happens if I break this mm. he's holding forward though but he's getting up backwards no, no, he's holding forward. Fuck. Making this very difficult to test, cameraman. Fuck, he's like, he doesn't... Random which side he ends up on. I can't get a good recording here. Ugh. You really need like a second player to test this kind of stuff consistently. It's a fucking. Oh, he's on two piece. Right? Okay. This might be good. Not moving, but locking low, right? Okay. 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 Oh 
shit. Ah. I'm gonna have to replace this cable. I've been trying to sidestep right a lot with some success. Alright, I mean, that's pretty much Armor King right there. It's like, there's obviously more to him. There's all sorts of funky tech. Once again, I recommend looking up Lil Majin on YouTube to uh, learn all of these set, all the setups that he was showing for this. Basically, guaranteed Juggle Lender. There's like various things you can do. This is a guaranteed Juggle Lender. It'll hit him if they stay grounded. And, uh, which you should do because you'll take less damage if you stay grounded. If you get up, you're going to eat the full damage. So. Don't get up. <laughs> and one of the juggles he showed was off of this. I wish I remember the pickup. It might have been character dependent though. It might have been a big character that was able to get hit by this afterwards. Any questions? Not just Armor King related, but uh, I mean, yeah, this is pretty much it for Armor King. I'll upload this to the Civil with Part One later. So you YouTube people, <laughs> adios. But you guys in the chats, 